so I ended up going to Charlotte, North Carolina. We rent an apartment. We decide to run a scam uh, in in uh, South Carolina. So I go to Columbia, South Carolina. And in between this period of time, we go to Las Vegas. And I, when we go to Las, we go to Las Vegas to drop off a bunch of money to uh, Becky's uh, son's father, who's taking care of her son. We drop off some money there. We go and we start. And, and while we're there, it's like, hey, there's homeless people here. So we. You, so you're, you're making, always. You know, yeah, usually I don't feel bad telling these stories. You make me feel I'm bad. Sorry. I'm sorry. My judgment is showing. No, uh, but you have to be collecting identities, I guess, to be right. constantly creating new identities. So, so uh, <laughs> I, I got my survey forms. So I go and, I, you know, we're, we we go out and we're taking, I'm taking surveys and I end up going up to this guy. There's like two or three guys that are standing on like a bench or sitting on next to a bench or something. And I see him and I walk up and the guy, one guy gets up and he comes over. He's like, Hey, what, what do you need? And I went, um, I'm taking a surveys for the Salvation Army to determine where we place our next homeless facility. And the guy goes, Oh, I'm not interested. And they always said that. And I said, it pays 20 bucks cash right now. It'll take you five minutes. Mm-hmm. And they're like, what you $20 cash right now. I was like, yeah, I show them the cash. And they go, okay, yeah, yeah. What do you need? Name, date of birth, social security number. So when I get to um, criminal record, the guy, he says, criminal record. He's like, yeah, I've been arrested. He goes, I've been arrested like three, four times for, he said, for uh, prostitution. He said, "Um, but they're like misdemeanors. And I went, okay. um, And it was like, okay, well, prostitution, to me, women get charged with prostitution, Mm -hmm. you know? Men get pro- charged with solicitation. I went prostitution, and he goes, and he went. He said, "Yeah, yeah." He said, "I offered to blow an undercover cop for twenty bucks." Mm-hmm. He said, I, "That's what I thought you were coming up here for." <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> "And I was like, no, no, bro." I said, uh, "Okay." And he's like, "Yeah." He said, uh, "You know," he goes, "He goes." I mean, he said, "I mean, a girl's got to do what a girl's got to do," you know. Right. And he made some comment or something. I was yeah. like, "Okay." Yeah. So I jot down the rest of it. We're good. I give him twenty bucks. I get in my car. I leave. Uh. We get back to North Carolina. I order all of his documents. His name was Gary Sullivan. Mm-hmm. I then go to South Carolina. When I go to South Carolina, mm-hmm. I get a real estate agent. We drive around for a day. We look at like five or six houses. I put five contra- five owner owner financing contracts on five different houses. So I get him. He writes up five contracts. All of them, I'm I'm asking for owner financing. I'll put down 10%. I want owner financing. Two of them end up coming back and saying, yes, we'll do it. I have two closings. One of them's a house that's worth like 225,000. I put down 25 grand. Another one's uh, 110,000. I put down 11,000. So I buy these two houses. I then satisfy the loans on both the houses. Everything seems like it's going okay. Although Becky's a, a lunatic at this point, she's she's had so many. She she won't take her medication. She's had so many outbursts uh, that, and, and we've had by this time we've had plastic surgery. Like she's gotten plastic surgery. She's gotten a boob job. She's gotten liposuction. I mean, all kinds of stuff. So look way different. Like appearance changes or thinner better looking, you know, just tightened everything up, I guess. You know, she was in her, she'd had a, she'd had a kid and she was 30, 33, 34. I don't know how she was, 20, 32, 33. I don't know, roughly my age. So yeah, I thought she looked, you know, she lost like 15 pounds. Like she was not because of the surgery, but just in general, we're not, we're just working out. We're going mountain climbing. We're, you know, riding bikes. We're doing, you know, there's fraud's not a full-time job. So, you know, we have plenty of time. So we're we're goofing off, and uh, but she's also a lunatic. You know, she's getting the cops called. She's out, able to go out and she's able to stay stoned twenty four hours a day. She's she's going out with friends, drinking. I never leave the house. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, even to this day, I really barely ever leave the house. I'm I'm very much a homebody kind of person. So, like the the idea that I'm able to make my living doing YouTube and I would never have to leave my house. Mm-hmm. I love that. I don't ever go anywhere except for the gym and back home. That's it. So what happens is 
uh, I, I've actually moved her out of the of my apartment. Like I had an apartment downtown, 30 story building, I actually move her into another apartment. She's that much of a lunatic. We can't even be in the same place. Multiple times I've tried to leave her. She's called me up and begged me to come back. It's horrible. So I end up buying a couple of houses in, in Columbia, South Carolina. I satisfy the loans on the houses. I've got an ID, not a driver's license, but an ID in the name of Gary Lee Sullivan. Mm-hmm. And I refinance. I refinanced those houses because keep in mind, they were owner financing, but they also had mortgages. So there's something called a wraparound mortgage. So these guys did wraparound mortgages. So let's say you buy a house for $250,000 and the bank lends you Mm $200,000 and then you owner finance the house to me. So we do a, I give you 50 grand down but I'm not, I'm not able to get a loan from the bank to pay off your mortgage. So what we do is you do a wraparound mortgage. So I'll pay you your mortgage and you pay the bank. So there is a second mortgage on the property, but it's called a wrap. It's a wrap. It's wrapped around the, your first. Mm-hmm. That's legal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I wouldn't lie to you. So it's, so there's, these have wraparound mortgages. So <laughs> you're always selling I, and you're good at it. <laughs> so I go, I satisfy. Yeah. The loans, the owner finance loans, the wraparound mortgages, and I, I satisfy the loans, their, the original loans that these people took out on their own mortgages. Mm-hmm. One of them, by the way, I sat, you know, you have to sign as the president of the bank, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I sign it as C. Montgomery Burns, which is the aging tycoon in the, the, the guy that owns a power plant in the Simpsons mm-hmm. TV show. Yeah. So I sign that and I notarize it. Mm-hmm which I thought was cute. I actually wanted to sign all of them cartoon characters and Becky was screaming her head off and wouldn't let me do it, right? Like I wanted to do all the Simpsons, right? Mm-hmm. But she wouldn't let me do it. She's screaming and hollering. So I ended up, you know, see, nobody knows who C. Montgomery Burns is. Mm-hmm. So I sign it, notarize it. All of those are satisfied. I then go to the multiple bank banks and I refinance, start refinancing all these, uh, these properties multiple times. So I'm applying for these loans and I'm getting the loans and I'm closing. So I've got like five or six loans on this one house. The house is like 225,000. I think it was like 230, whatever. I, I, I get, I borrow like four or five loans on that house. So I borrow like $190,000, like five times. So I've got like $800,000 and then I borrow another three or 400 thousand on the other house, the one, the smaller one, right? So it ends up being like $1.3 million. It's actually like 1.5 million. It was more, but what happened with that was, so keep in mind, I, you can only open up so many bank accounts in your name. You can go to Bank of America, they'll open one. Then you go to SunTrust, they'll open one. They're going to add, they might even ask you, did you, did you open another bank account today? Because every time you do it, there's an inquiry into something called check systems um, or AccuCheck. And so then they go, so then by the time you go to the third bank, they'll say, listen, something's not right. You've got multiple inquiries. Mm -hmm. You know, if you go to whatever mercantile bank, there might be, they might go, okay, we're going to open one. They're going to need an explanation, but you're not, you're not opening more than three. Mm -hmm. By the third one, they're going to be like, absolutely not. Something's wrong. So, you know, I've got multiple identities, but I can only open up so many, so many banks. The other problem is that these, these checks They'll only give you so much money on a refi. Usually after $100,000, they only want to let you walk away with, let's say, $100,000. So one of the things I did was I would, I would typically record another mortgage and have them pay that mortgage off. So I had to open, I opened a corporation to do that so I could then turn around and go open corporate bank accounts. Because now it's not going off my information, it's going off the corporation. So I can open up multiple corporate bank accounts. Well, these corporations are fake or real? No, no. I went to a real corporate bank attorney, corporate attorney, and had him open them. I gave him whatever. I gave him like fifteen hundred dollars, two thousand dollars, and he opened up a corporation for me, Gary Sullivan. Yeah. And I then turned around and I went and opened up multiple bank accounts in that in those that corporation's name. How how are you keeping track of all this? Because this is I don't need this. So I, I'm is only, it in your head or do you have good? No, no, oh, no, no. I have every single identity has its own file mm-hmm. with with um you know plastic inlays sleeves for their passports that's nice and organized for all this. Yeah, it's super you, organized you open this i'm gary now right it's, that's exactly what it is like you kind of go over boom 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 you sit in your car for a minute you put it down you walk in mm-hmm. well 
what happens is it went up to like 1.5 million and I'm pulling money out of the bank. And then one day I get a phone call on Gary Sullivan's cell phone. The guy, it's a, it's a lawyer. They call up. He says, hey, I'm a lawyer with Washington Mutual. We have an issue. I said, what's that? He says, we got a phone call from the title company. One of the title companies that I was attempting to refinance a, one of the pieces of property with noticed that I, they had been sent, they'd been sent a document that showed that I had purchased the property and I said I purchased it cash. And I the document said I purchased it cash. And they got that. And there was actually a mortgage on the property. And so somehow or another, they, they connected it. And they called Washington Mutual. And they said, look, there's an issue. There's a fraud. We have a fraudulent document here. And he was like, he said, so we went and we looked. And it turns out that we pulled public records. And that there is a mortgage in front of us, several mortgages in front of us. So there's like three or four mortgages in front of me, Washington Mutual. You owe us, and it wasn't that much. It was like a hundred, it was like a like hundred grand, right? Like 95 or a hundred. And I said, uh, okay. And he said, so there's an issue here. You've got a few mortgages in front of us and we're supposed to be a first mortgage. And we're not supposed to be two mortgages behind or three. And I was like, okay, sounds like a, sounds like an error. Not a big deal. Um, have you contacted law enforcement? He said, no, I haven't. I was hoping we could rectify this some other way. I said, you know what? I think we can. I'm going to have my lawyer call you back. I'm going to go to his place right now. Give me about two hours. No problem. I immediately run, jump in my car, head towards South Carolina, call my corporate lawyer, tell him, look, I need to talk to you. Here's what's going on. I explain it to him. He doesn't really understand. He says, um, this sounds pretty complicated. I have a, my bit, my law partner is a criminal defense attorney. I'm going to have, I'm going to set up a meeting right now with all of us. Okay. I get there 45 minutes later. I walk in the door. I sit down. He says, what happened? I said, oh, they said, you know, Gary, this is, this is, doesn't sound right. What's, what do you, what happened? I said, okay, so listen, bought this house. I bought it cash. I then refinanced it. I didn't buy it cash, but I told him I bought it cash. I refinanced it like four or five times within a day or two of each other. And they were like, how is that even possible? I was like, well, I went to different title companies. I explained how I do it. I said, Washington Mutual just found out that they're in like second position or third position. Mm -hmm. And, or, or I said, but they're probably, they may be in fourth position. You know, they mail these things in. So you never know. And he was like, oh my God. He's like, that's uh." What do you want to do? I said, I, I want you to contact them and agree for them to not contact the authorities provided we pay them. I pay them off. He said, do you have the money? I said, I do have the money. I can go get the money right now. He calls the lawyer. They, this is back when faxes, right? So they fax some documents back and forth. They make, they do a couple emails back and forth and uh, they have a conversation. I remember the lawyer started arguing because he wanted to charge me, um, like yield spread and fees and stuff. And I was like, I was like, what are you talking about? Like, I'll pay it. Like, so it ends up being a little over a hundred thousand. And I'm like, that's it. So he's like, okay. And so he says, okay, um, that sounds good. And so I, he said, okay, all you have to do is go get the check. And he said, bring it to a Washington mutual branch. Tell them to call. I said, I'm not going into Washington mutual branch, bro. I'll bring you the check. So he, he calls him back. He's not doing that. And he's like, okay, I'm not, I'll bring it here. You guys take care. He said, no problem. Okay. Hang up the phone. And he turns to me. He says, okay, well, we have a problem. He said, we still have the problem of these other mortgages. And I went, right. And he said, um, and he goes, okay, well, I said, they don't know anything. He said, I know, but Gary, he said, what if they find out? I said, they find out that they're like in second, third and fourth place. He's like, right. I said, I, I leave town. And he went, they, they, so they both laugh. They go, <laughs> Gary, you can't just leave town. I, they they have they have a copy of your driver's license. They have your social security number. They have your birth certificate. I said they'll find you. It's the FBI. And I go, you're assuming I'm Gary Sullivan. Wow, you tell them. And he, they listen. They looked at me and they went. And I and I remember he said he goes, well uh, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. And I said right. My immediate problem is getting rid of these people. Mm -hmm. And he goes right right. So oh. <laughs> I go get oh. the check, bring it back, give it to them. Never called the FBI. I can't believe you got away with the, with the, with the Washington Mutual. Like oh, bro. 
This is. I mean, these are all really close calls. It seems like you. No, this is the close call. 